Hi, and welcome to this first video in our series on atomic theory. I want to start by taking a look at the model of the nuclear atom. For an example here, I'm considering a model of a picture of how we might think lithium looks. Now what you see here in the center of the core of this atom is what we call the nucleus. And present in that nucleus, the red particle here, is to represent something called a proton. Protons have a charge of 1 plus. Also present in the nucleus of this core of the atom is this neutral white particle called a neutron. And it has no charge. Now, in terms of weight or mass, protons and neutrons have about the same mass. So I'll say it's approximately the same mass as my proton, which I'll represent here with a P plus. Now also present in our atom are electrons, but they don't exist here. They exist in space outside here, somewhere in this cloud. Now, a little bit about the scale of this particular diagram. It is somewhat not to scale. If one was to do this quite truly, um, these protons and neutrons might represent tennis balls and the size of the atom would be a football stadium or soccer stadium with the electrons somewhere out in the bleachers. Um, so again, this isn't quite to scale. This particle in here is my electron. And electrons have a charge of one minus. And the other thing is they have virtually no mass. If I was to compare it with a proton, it's a fraction, almost one over 2,000. A little bit more accurately, though, it would be 1 over 1850, the mass of my proton. So those are the players that, that make up our atom. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. Electrons existing in a cloud or space outside of the nucleus. And the nucleus can, has both our protons and our neutrons, which make up most of the mass of the atom. Now we can represent this by something called atomic notation. And down below, here is an example of how this will work. First of all, up here, this represents the total number of particles that are in my nucleus, called the mass number, since most of the mass of the atom is made up of protons and neutrons. Down below, Z here, this represents the number of protons that are present in the nucleus. And in a neutral atom, the number of protons and the number of electrons will equal each other. So for instance, up here, there were three protons, and as a result, because this atom was neutral, I had three electrons. Typically, here for atomic notation, we would put the charge. In this case, there is no charge, so we've left it blank. If it's blank, it's understood to be zero. But by adding or moving of electrons, I can create a charge on my species. And finally, the chemical symbol X, that's based on my number of protons that I have. So once I know this number, I can get the symbol. And the way we get that is from our periodic table. I'll bring one over here just to show you a bit how that works. So if I take a look at this periodic table and I see a 4 here for the element beryllium, I know that it has 4 protons and as a result it also has 4 electrons. Let's try something else on the table. Gallium. 31 there indicates 32 protons. Um, and it would also have 31 electrons in a neutral atom. So let's go back now and create the atomic notation that I might have for uh, the species that I've drawn up above, that lithium atom. So let's just get a different color here. So first of all, because I know it's the element lithium, I'll put Li in the center. The number of particles in the nucleus all together there it looks like seven of them. It looks like I have four neutrons in that picture. One, two, three, four of them, and three protons. So the mass number would be seven. Now, there are three protons present there, so that occupies this spot. And it would be understood there's no charge here because I have three electrons. So that would represent the atomic notation of the lithium atom. Let's try a few more of these. Okay, 
atomic notation here for this species. This is the aluminum atom. I see a 13 here, so there would be 13 protons. Because there's no charge, there must be 13 electrons. There's 27 particles that make up the nucleus, 13 of which are the protons. So by subtracting those two, I can arrive that there must be 14 neutrons in this species. In this next question, I'm told it's the element carbon, and I'm told there are eight neutrons. Well, because it's the element carbon, by consulting the periodic table, I know there are six protons present in a carbon. And as a result, because there's no indication of charge here, there must also be six electrons. The number of particles in my nucleus, I can put these two together and get 14. So that must be my mass number. Next one, we're dealing with an ion, and we'll see how that modifies things. Phosphorus, 15 down below tells me 15 protons. In a, new, in a normal atom, I would have 15 electrons. However, because there's three minus, that tells me that I've added three negative electrons to the picture. So I'm going to have to add three electrons to this. And that's going to mean that I have 18 electrons in this picture. Now for the number of neutrons, there's 31 particles in the nucleus, 15 of which are protons. So that must be 16 neutrons. And in my last example, I don't know what the element is, but I do know it has 20 protons. As soon as I know that, I consult the periodic table, and I can see that that must be the element calcium, and I can put a 20 down below here. It has 18 electrons in it. Now that's too short of 20, because it normally should have 20. So being too short of 20, I know that it must therefore have a 2 plus charge. There's a shortage of electrons. And 22 neutrons with the 20 protons, that together gives me a 42 for its mass number. So you should be very familiar with how to use atomic notation to determine the location and number of particles that are present. In our next program, we'll take a look at isotopes. Thanks for watching.